In this episode, we'll take a look at Isotope RX's mouth declick and declick modules or plugins. Let me give you a sample of the audio that we're going to be using. Here we go. A lot of times when people take a breath in, sometimes they'll kind of do this interesting thing with their mouth at the same time, the sort of... And then also I've heard plenty of mouth... I guess this is more of a tongue click. Like that. And then of course there's just general mouth moisture noises, saliva noises. Not great. Pretty horrible. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that I've learned through experience with each of these plugins or modules, depending on how you use them. First up, one of the things I've learned over time is that it's best not to use the D-Click plugin on the entire audio clip. So I wouldn't want to select all and then run D-Click. It just will affect the dialogue in pretty destructive ways. So it just won't sound all that great. Let me just uh, use these settings right here and I'll run through and show you how it sounds. A lot of times when people take a breath in, sometimes they'll kind of do this interesting thing with their mouth at the same time, the sort of... And then also I've heard plenty of... Okay, took care of the clicks for sure, but it also affected the dialogue in pretty destructive ways. Second, for most short duration clicks, that's gonna be things like the little clicks we had in the breaths here, or the mouth clicks, a lot of times I find that the standard D-Click plugin works best. And what I'll do is just select the parts I want to address, not any of the dialogue. Once I render that, the breath clicks now sound like this. Pretty much just like breaths. And here's another example here with the tongue clicks. Still a little bit of noise, but got most of it. So. That's the second thing that I've learned for the most part. And then third, if I do have a lot of mouth noise, it's kind of mixed up with the dialogue. Typically that's gonna be things more like this, the saliva noises as someone talks. In that case, I will almost always use the mouth declick with fairly modest settings, nothing too aggressive. And that way it doesn't tend to destroy the dialogue or degrade the dialogue as much but it does tend to reduce some of these saliva noises. All right, let's jump in and take a look at the different settings. First, on mouth declick. The first setting is sensitivity, and what this does, is it determines how many mouth clicks are detected in the signal. So, for example, if I set the sensitivity to its lowest setting and just run through these clicks right here. And then also I've heard plenty of mouth... It hasn't detected any yet. Let's crank that sensitivity up and do it again. And then also I've heard it's detecting a whole lot more clicks at this point. I generally find just as a rule of thumb to start, I usually go somewhere between five and six on sensitivity as a starting point. Don't generally have to go too far beyond that, but if you do go up to 10, you're gonna start affecting things other than just the clicks if you are trying to, for example, run it through some dialogue as well. So generally between five and six is a good place to start. Next setting is frequency skew. Now, what's interesting, if I come over here to the spectrogram view, let me just give you some background here. You can see, for example, these tongue clicks are pretty broadband, which is to say they have energy all the way down in the low frequencies, all the way up to the high frequencies in the 20 kilohertz range. That's fairly broadband, they include everything. These mouth saliva noises, on the other hand, don't have quite as much energy down here in the low frequencies. They tend to start somewhere around mm, 800 hertz and go up from there. And you can see this one in particular has a lot of high frequency energy. And in this case, it really kind of kicks in at about four kilohertz. So that reality is why they included this frequency skew setting. And what this does is it targets the detection and removal of clicks to lower or higher frequencies. So for example, if I'm working on these clicks right here, these are basically broadband, so I just leave it right here in the middle at zero. But if I'm working on these saliva noises, I would skew this up towards the higher frequencies a little bit since that's what we're working on there. Okay, then the final setting is the click widening. Click widening extends the repair area around the detected clicks. So if I'm working on something that is more like a tongue click, these are a little bit longer can see those waveforms are just a little bit more broad. 
See that they last a little bit longer than something like that, potentially. Or these, these are a bunch of different clicks altogether. Like that's a very short duration one there. So this widening broadens the area over which it detects and cleans up the clicks. So usually I find in a lot of cases for dialogue, spoken word audio, that widening this up to about 2.5 milliseconds tends to be a really good starting point. So that's usually what I do. All right, let's move over to the D-Click plugin. This is the one that's available in Elements, Standard, and Advanced versions of Isotope RX. And in contrast, the Mouth D-Click is only available in the Standard and Advanced versions. So you might think, well, this one's more advanced. It's a more capable D-Clicker. Mm, I don't really see it that way. In fact, I see them as kind of different tools for different jobs. And again, mouth D-click is generally going to be if I have to run it over a bunch of dialogue audio and not just select clicks. So if I've got clicks and mouth noises within the dialogue itself, I'll use mouth D-click. If I'm cleaning up discrete clicks, this D-click plugin does a better job in my experience. Okay, this one has the exact same settings you'll notice, except for it also has this algorithm setting. Now, if you're doing something where you're processing live audio, like for example, for a live stream, you might want to use the low latency mode. However, if you are doing dialogue post-processing, I typically would use the multi-band random clicks mode. This has some characteristics that make it a little bit better for vocals and less likely to affect them. However, again, if I'm going to run something over dialogue, I'll generally use this one. But in this one, almost always I'll use the multi-band random clicks. Okay. Let's just give you an idea of how this works here. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this here. And let's run this on this. And this is what it sounds like now. Okay. Let's go over here to the tongue clicks. Left a little bit there. We might actually have some low frequency stuff going on that it didn't entirely clean up. You can see there is some of that down there. So I might, I might do a little bit of EQ actually on the entire clip, but we could just do it here. Put a high pass filter on, 75 hertz, 48 dB per octave. Clean some of that up. Still got a little bit more here. I could come in here and do some spectral repair, or I might just run the D-click again. Hmm, it's not seeming to pick it up at this point. I might drop the frequency skew down a little bit. Nope. At this point, we're probably going to have to go and get the spectral repair out, do a little work there. But again, pretty good job. Now here are the mouth noises. Uh, let's go ahead and see what these can do here. I'll go back to the waveform view. And let's just run the D-click on this. Let's put this back in the middle. Actually, we can put this one up, bump it up just a little higher. Again, remember, there were some higher frequency kind of bias or skew with these particular clicks here. And now it sounds like this. <laughs> There's still some really weird stuff going on there. Fortunately, it's sitting back in the, you know, closer to the noise floor. If we look at this, it's max RMS levels at minus 56. Um, you'd probably want to do some more cleanup there. If you were working on a film, you might layer in some, maybe some room tone. Um, you might do some spectral repair. Let's just take a look at the spectrogram now and see how it looks. Yeah, there's some there's some stuff that could still be cleaned up there. Uh, but overall, it does a pretty good job. So that is the D-Click plugin. Let's go ahead and undo all of that. Now we're back at our initial state. All right, let's try the mouth D-Click. With similar settings here, we're going to go 5.5 on the sensitivity, keep the frequency skew right towards the middle because, again, this is a pretty broadband set of clicks that we're working on here, and our click widening at about 2.5 milliseconds. Run that. Didn't entirely remove them. And we're still very much hearing them. So, again, this is where I found that the regular D-click module tends to do a better job there. Here is some tongue clicks. Definitely left those. That wouldn't be my first choice of tool for that. When we get to this, let's see how this does. Yep, 
you can see pretty consistently that it is less aggressive, um, but it also didn't sound quite so artifacty either. So it didn't really create these weird things here. Here is, for example, some dialogue where there's a click right here. Let's play that back. Heard plenty of mouth. I guess this is more of a tongue click. Let's see how it does on this. Hmm. Not so well. Heard plenty of mouth. I guess this is more. Let's undo that. See if we can get in there and see where that frequency, frequencies of that click are sitting. I'm gonna zoom in some. It's actually a fairly low frequency. It's right here. That's kind of skewed towards the lower frequency. So let's drop this down a little bit. See if what happens when we do this again. I've heard plenty of mouth. I guess it's a little better. Um, let's skew it even lower. So I've heard plenty of mouth. I guess this is more of a little better. So you can see how this could be a little bit more useful when you're running into something that has dialogue and you don't want to affect the dialogue too much, but you do want to capture the clicks. So there is an overview of the mouth declick and of the declick modules from Isotope RX. Just as a reminder, mouth declick is in the standard and advanced versions of Isotope RX, and the declick module is in both the elements standard and advanced. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Bye.